Zach. Michael. How's our WordPress doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's doing great. Uh, yeah, yeah. As of like two months ago, <laughs> last last two months have been a little shaky. Um, our blogs are not updating very much. Uh, that's, that's all. It's all right. Uh, yeah, I'm not trying to call uh, you out. I don't know uh, that it's the premier part of the the, the podcast. But, yeah, yeah. You know, you know <laughs> that's that's a good point. We I was looking, I was monitoring the monthly stats. We were getting a little bit of traffic, but it wasn't uh, it wasn't like yeah. groundbreaking, but. It was helping probably a little bit. Is it more in place just to kind of like when, the more sites you have yes, and stuff? Yes, people kind of Google ties it, it and yeah, stuff, yeah, it gets it shows tagged it. to yeah, stuff. Yeah, that, yeah. That's really the yeah. – and, um, you know, <laughs> this is – I don't know if this does anything or not, but you, I could like post like the transcript. And I was just getting like a lot of words. I was just getting a lot of content on there. So if someone – Googled of anything we said. Right. It was just like yeah, yeah. just so much kind repetition. Of link it, link it. Yeah, yeah, yeah and that was kind of kind of my thought. But thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> we we were just talking a little bit, and I do have my hats off to Michael. He is the uh, producer behind the scenes. I show up and I talk, and I, it's all I do. No, and Michael good. Good. Michael uh, d- does puts everything on YouTube and Spotify and all that. Yeah. So uh, you know, because I I almost got credit. For being a producer. <laughs> yeah. I was, uh, there was some uh, gentleman at our church that was listening, and I guess he's kind of started re- listening recently and clearly hasn't listened to all of them, which is fine. You know, listen to what you want to. That's right. But uh, he was talking, and we didn't get any comments, which is fine on the background. Oh, know, yeah. Whether we should change it, but he was commenting. He was, he was wondering first where we recorded it, and I was like, oh, well. You know, Zach's parents' house is right across the street, so we're there, and we have the green screen. Maybe I'll like blink Ooh, off the uh, the uh, the background for just a second. But anyways, and he said, "Well, I noticed that you know, it's always this Hobbit, Lord of the Rings thing. Uh, does Zach put that in? Does he <laughs> does he like Lord of the Rings?" And I was like, uh, "No, Zach Man, hates Lord of the Rings." If I saw and, a Hobbit, I would kick him <laughs> kick him in the face. And then I'm I'm the one that's producing it. I mean that part's not hard, you know. You just click make, a button. Click a button. Put drag clicks, the picture in. Adds up. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know it was a Hobbit house for like four episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wonder what he's doing with the background. But then, but I I, I, I thought it was Lord of the Rings adjacent yeah, or yeah, related. Yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. I knew I knew there was yeah. some sort of witch magic, witch sorcery, <laughs> magic sorcery. whatever this fanciful oh, fairyland man. that Michael plays in. Oh, let me just say, let me give a shout out here. Um, <laughs> So I've I've been working through you know I, I read a lot of both uh, books for growth or for knowledge okay. but I also read some recreational books in this genre of fantasy and stuff and I've been reading uh, a lot of books in with Brandon Sanderson the Cosmere Universe I think he's got some good stuff there I needed a little bit of a break mm. so I there was this new it's new to me but I guess it's been out for a number of years Andy Circus does that name ring a bell it. It rings a bell because you've talked about him. I, I don't know anything about this guy. <laughs> yeah. He was the voice. Did we already talk about this in a podcast? Surely not. Oh, we, we, I think we might have. You. This is why I know this guy. He re, he reads Gollum or he reads the Lord yeah. of the Rings or something. Yeah, yeah, Man, I hope I hope we're not repeating banter. It, it's it fine. Happen, it, it happens when you get old. If if the audience <laughs> is like me, I've already checked out for a little bit. So I'll come back in when we're... Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm just... But the voice of Gollum uh, in the movies reads through the books in the audio format. And I think it's simply the best because it captures the best of the movies because he kind of mimics the voices of the characters. Um, and then it also is the true, uh, you know, plot line and characters. Like you don't have Faramir getting tempted by the ring like he does in the uh, movie. Like Faramir, cra- crazy. come on. Yeah, so I just finished that out. So really good. I'm working on um, Shepherds for Sale right now. Oh, I'm going I'm to listen to that. It's a frustrating book. It's like, yeah. uh, get, kind of behind the scenes, real life, what's going on. Yeah, and how people have, have sold themselves out. And, and, and how, I don't, I don't want to get too political, but how mm-hmm. we get accused of everything that actually the other side is, is doing. Um, so Man, some, some good reading, a little yeah. bit different genres. I was going to say, if uh, Tolkien would have written like a book on like Abraham Lincoln, probably would have read it. Give, yeah. give, give me if he gave me a, does he, yeah. does he write, did he write biographies i'd be more inclined to read that well i'm he did write some stuff that wasn't in the uh, lord of the rings universe mm. there's something about a i have it a farmer and a maybe another troll or something that who, who goes out and gets him. i was with you with farmer as soon as yeah. a troll i'm yeah. like eh. his his he did a lot of norse mythology mm. and looked into the language of you know sweden and norway and that kind of stuff 
And he was grieved that when the Romans came in and really kind of destroyed all of the mythologies and the heritages associated with the, the British Isles. And so he's like imagining like, what could those have been? And so he mm. creates these languages, these legends. Uh, so if you read the Cimmerillion, which is like the behind the scenes, you get credit for just trying to read that because it's a pretty... It's worse than Lord of the Rings. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> this is miserable. But, and so then he writes the Lord of the Rings in that universe. And wow. I could wax longer, but probably wow. unless you are a Lord of the Rings uh, I'm just glad fan, I got this Red Bull because uh, <laughs> it's keeping me engaged. Then, then you're probably not all that interested in it, but yeah. Well, when I read Lord of the Rings, it reminds me of how to, <laughs> reminds me about there's a good side of man and a bad side of man, you <laughs> yeah, know? Yeah, and yeah. and we're in this foundations class. Uh, this this time we're going to talk about anthropology, mm -hmm. our lesson number one. So let's go ahead and take it to the next level. From the heart of the low country in South Carolina, it's the Take Two Podcast, where we take theology to the next level. Anthropology. Mm -hmm. When I think of anthropology, I think of a college class. <laughs> a college. I, I I should. Yeah. I guess some people think of that. Some people might think of like a. There, there's a store, like a fashion store, anthropology for women oh, or something. Maybe. I don't know. I, that I'm. Yeah, I, I, we're I, like, wrong I know, audience here. Yeah. yeah, I know like Ulta. I, I, I know the stores that my daughters and wife go to, but I'm not yeah. familiar with this one. Um, it might not be a store. Uh. I, I'm, it's out of my element too. <laughs> um, we're looking at the study of man. And when I think of man, I think man is terrible, yeah. desperately wicked, totally yeah. depraved. Mm -hmm. And so when I was listening, I, met, I was out Sunday, but listening to Tim, and he was highlighting the positives. Like, this is good. Mm -hmm. gives a good balance because right. I think – Especially uh, if you're, you know, skewed towards the reform mm -hmm. side of things, you really focus on what's wrong with the mm -hmm. world yeah. uh, more so than the positive aspects right. of man. Yeah, and I, I don't remember the the terms of art. I should have looked it up, but Francis Schaeffer also highlights kind of the dual nature, like how you know the the glorious magnificence of man and and how God created us. Uh, versus the marred, flawed side of us because of the fall. And there's like these dual things that are kind of at odds with each other. So this first lesson, Tim's really highlighting the the first, you know, so, yeah, the so glorious nature. So if you're halfway nature. through and, and you're like, man, they haven't really hyped you with man. <laughs> it's because, yeah, because that's in the Bible. That's part of it. Right. And we'll, we'll, we'll balance it out yeah. um, next, next time. Um, and Tim, uh, I think most, we've said this many times, but he, he's a counselor. So he's got yeah. some really good insight right. into, yeah. into into mankind at a great week with this lesson in our foundations series. Um, and really where he started off with, or what he started off with was talking about man being the pinnacle of creation. That there's mm. glory to mm. man. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's very good. That mm -hmm. was said after he created man. Uh, we're the only ones that uh, were created in his image. And then we have these verses from Psalm 8.4. And um, I, I missed the very first of his. Did he read it out of the KJV when he did no, it? No, uh, no, he he did not. But okay. he said some translations might say a little lower than the angels. Right, but he right. read God. Yeah, yeah. So uh, KJV says, "When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man in comparison to those that thou art mindful of him, the son of man that thou visitest." him for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and hast crowned him with glory and honor thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands thou hast put all things under his feet all sheep and oxen yea and the beasts of the field the fowl of the air the fish of the sea and whatsoever passes through the paths of the sea O lord our lord how excellent is thy name in all earth. Love that KJV. <laughs> yeah. I visited the... <laughs> visited the... Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that is, that's good. And that, that's how I've always... I mean, growing up mm -hmm. and the point out, Hebrews, author of Hebrews is quoting the Septuagint, yeah. says a little lower than the angels. Mm -hmm. um, but most other translations do not say that. Yeah, we have a little more accurate... I think we got that maybe with the Dead Sea Scrolls because uh, we get some of the actual original Hebrew instead of the Septuagint. And it says... Like verse five from the CSB says, you made him a little less than God and crowned him with glory uh, and honor. And NLT, NLT is similar. Um, <clears throat> I should have done a better gloss through translations, but really 
most modern. I think actually ESV. I should I should pull this up because I yeah. think ESV um, does not do. It might go KJV does something different. I believe because a lot. Of, I think a philosophy of the ESV is they try to preserve some of the quote unquote majesty. Like if you read Psalm twenty three, mm-hmm. they're very very close to um, the KJV. To the KJV, yes. Um, here. It says heavenly beings instead of God. Oh. It says gods, essentially. Uh, yeah, the you know? Elohim, yeah, yeah, the yeah. plural. So that, that's, the, that's the difference there. So we're bringing Heisler back into it. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's great. And Heiser. We... <laughs> I know it's Heiser. I said it's it on a, purpose. He, he's in on the joke now. Okay. It's uh. great. Um, so uh. se- setting that up, like Michael's saying, Genesis creation account, man is very good. We read the psalmist talking about the, this significance that... Mm-hmm. God had in mind when he created man that there there is a glory in man and that there is a total different when you compare man to the rest of creation that we need to keep in mind that that's a reality yeah Yeah, and I I just reading through here thinking about you know the the words that are here it says uh you made him ruler over all the works of your hands and put everything under his feet like the, there's something very similar said about Jesus in Colossians. You know, you put everything subject to Him, and I, I'm I'm not I'm I'm just thinking. Yeah, you know, this is off the cuff, so I haven't. But I wonder if there's been any kind of study between this and Jesus and the thought that maybe, you know, we as mankind have this role, and then Jesus as the God Man kind of ultimately fulfills that because yeah. He has a human nature. We talked about that, you know, two weeks ago. No, I, I, I think that is so good, something good to, to keep in mind. Um, so that's, that's kind of where Tim started, that man has a glory. Mm-hmm. Um, not as glorious as God, right? but there it is a glory. There's something significant and um, intrinsically valu- uh, valuable about man. And, and really, mm-hmm. that's wrapped up that man is made in the image of God. Right. Big term. We've mentioned it a little bit here. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's one of those terms that I think if you go... Yeah, you get on the internet, Google, you get 18 right. different yeah. answers, mm-hmm. and people are kind of trying to wrestle with, you know, what what does this term mean? Um, maybe we'll read the text and we'll talk about it a little bit more. Um, but this passage, Genesis 1, 26 and 27, and then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. So so, so that, you know, we can answer that question. What does it mean mm-hmm. to be made in the image of God? Yeah, I would say it, in, if you were to put one word on it, I would put the word ambassador on, on that because it carries this idea of representing him and kind of carrying out his desires in the realm to which you've been sent. And I think this kind of aligns close. I've been influenced a little bit by Heiser mm. because he would, but not, I'm not totally yep. uh, as far as Heiser is because I think in order to be an ambassador, in order to fulfill that role, you have to have some of these qualities that most mm-hmm. people would say are the image of God. I, I don't think you can separate them. I think they go together. I think to say, Oh, um, if you have these qualities, your image of God, or if you have this uh, kind of role to fulfill your image of God, yeah, I think they're, they go hand in they're hand. tied together. Yeah. And I think that's probably why people have a hard time. Like, yeah. is it, so I wrote, I wrote down some of these things when you read different systematics, you'll read, is it, you know, man having the ability to make ethical decision that, that he has emotions, this ability to communicate rational thought, consciousness, having a conscience, um, this idea of morality. Mm-hmm. Um, what what exactly is the image of God? Mm-hmm. Um, and then something I think that Heiser points out that is good, it, like you're saying, being an ambassador, this vice regents, um, that just by being human, you have this status because mm-hmm. that is your role. Right. But but I think you are right that in that role, you have this creativity and you right. have emotions right. and you have a moral yeah. compass and these kind of things. Yeah, and we have these concepts. You see it all through our language, like human rights, you know, or, you know, over the humanity or, you know, this kind of built into this idea that there is a difference between humans and the other creation. Now, uh, in secular world, that, that difference has tried to be blurred where, you know, Mm -hmm. we're, we're fine killing, you know, babies in the womb, but kill, you know, a endangered rhino in the womb. Well, that's, (laughs) that's crazy. Yeah. yeah, You're crossing the line. So 
not that I'm, I'm for protecting rhinos, but I'm also see the difference between a rhino and a human. Um, there's this guy that talks about, you know, we don't, it was, it's okay to, you know, got roaches in your house. You can gas your Mm -hmm. house to kill the roaches, but you know, to gas humans like Hitler did. Yeah. That, that's huge difference. huge difference. And so, um, we are, um, we're not saying this pridefully, but we are the pinnacle from what we mm-hmm. know of God's physical creation. No. And, and kind of going back to man having the status or this role as ambassador, I think that's important to really hold on to because when people do talk about mm-hmm. things like abortion, they often will look at, you know, does a fetus have rational thought or do they feel pain or can they make decisions? And they kind of go to that. And so if that's what you're hanging your hat on and that's right. the image of God, that it's a sliding scale that right. some people have it, you know, and some people don't, that that's a problem. So you right. have to, you should at least acknowledge that it's this. Because um, there's a period about eight hours out of every 24 hours where I don't have any of those <laughs> qualities. So that, that's a good point too, where it's like, uh, yeah, you don't want to go down that road. Right. Yeah. yeah. Bad, yeah. bad place to go. So that kind of sets the stage for, What's all wrapped up in man being the pinnacle of creation? Man is made in the image of God. Uh, another very important foundational question is what is man's purpose? What What's man supposed to do? What What is man's job? And I think Tim went to the Westminster Shorter Catechism, this familiar phrase, what is the chief end of man? Man's chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. Which is great, and I'm, I'm a you know I'm a Piper guy. Yeah, and I think CS I think he gets this from C.S. Lewis. I'm not sure, um, but Piper like changes that and to buy, and he's mm-hmm. like, man, you glorify God by enjoying Him mm-hmm. forever, and those things are not disconnected. Those things right. go together. If you're doing right. those together, mm-hmm. you, everything kind of falls into place. Yeah, I I can I, you know from what we know, God is glorified when we think highly of Him and, and enjoy Him, and and it's the same way like. You know, we could go lesser or greater. Like your kids, you, yeah. when they enjoy you and they, you know, think highly of you and they want to be like you, that brings you glory as a parent. And obviously, you know, lesser or the greater, same, same for God. So that's a good thing to keep in mind as you live your life. I think another thing to keep in mind is, you know, what were Adam and Eve, mm-hmm. maybe, you know, what were they specifically tasked with mm-hmm. with the garden? That probably gives a yeah. good insight into what they're purpose is. Um, I don't know if you want to uh, read Genesis 1, sure. 28 through 31. It says, and God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in it for its fruit. You shall have them for food (laughs) and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the heavens and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life. I have given every green plant for food and it was so, and God saw everything that he made and behold, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Great. Um, And so Adam and Eve, they had a job Mm -hmm. to do, fill the earth, yeah. multiply and not only that but they were called to have dominion over creation mm-hmm. to subdue it um and so tim did a good job i think talking about like he makes things so practical yeah. he was talking about changing a tire mm-hmm. like we should you have the ability to learn how to do this care for mm-hmm. others um to kind of use different technologies mm-hmm. for your and god's good yeah, he was really hitting on this idea of subduing. He was like, I was subduing my, I don't think he was changing tire, plugging a tire that oh, had a leak. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, he's talking about, you know, I can subdue that in my emotions and my will. Like I get tired of putting air in my tire. And so how God has made us, eventually I'm going to subdue that tire. tire. Am I subduing, you know, my sleep schedule? Am I subduing yeah, my, practical. you know, all of these different things. And he's really putting it in a practical nature. But I think it also has implications for um environment Mm -hmm. because i think christians uh because we kind of get aligned to the the right side of our political system at least in america uh, we get pegged as not caring about the environment and i would say in some sense that shouldn't be true in some sense we should care the most about the environment because we are living up to this creation mandate but that doesn't mean that we try to return the environment to mm-hmm. the most natural setting ever. Like right, we can right. make changes to the environment. We can subdue the environment. We can make it work 
but we should do that in a way that it shows a love for God and what mm-hmm. he's given us and what he's blessed us with the resources and a love for our fellow people. Yeah. Uh, because I shouldn't litter, not because of earth. Yeah. I shouldn't litter because of my yeah, fellow what's the motive. Yeah. My, my neighbor who's going to come along and see that trash or that trash that might affect animals that my neighbor wants to be able to see and learn about, or maybe hunt or whatever, you know, well, all the things that I think the earth was put no, here for. That, that is so good because I think the devil's in the details because they don't, they wouldn't want to go totally, they don't want to get rid of all AC and everything right. anyway. Yeah, yeah. It's like everyone's drawing the line at some mm-hmm. point have reasons behind it. So I'm sure, you know, everyone's like, ah, you know, the, you know, People don't care about the environment, but do you think it's good just to, you want to go camp, just sit in a tent, yeah, yeah. Here, you know what I mean? And you've been camping. <laughs> and it was hot. And it was hot. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a lot of fun, yeah. but it was fun for two days. Right, yeah. <laughs> not for not for my life, right? Right, right. Um, so yeah. a little, we'll take a couple minutes here, a little spin off because we don't have to get too much in the weeds, but there are different theological systems that seem to be popping up all the mm-hmm. time on, on one far end of the spectrum. You've got something that's referred to as theonomy. In simple terms, I mean God's law, which I think we all would say God's law is good. Right. Um, some, some of these people kind of take it to the extreme where they believe that the goal um, would be really to usher in Christ's kingdom through politics, mm-hmm. through whatever it's, you right. know, they they want to, you know, in a way, you use this cultural mm-hmm. mandate to exercise dominion over everything mm-hmm. and kind of, you know, be that mustard seed that's mm-hmm. growing, right? Um, and then on the other hand, you might have someone like a fundamentalist that says, the world is so bad mm-hmm. out there, I'm going to keep my little bubble in here and I'm not going to engage right. in in the world. Um, and and so I think, I think those are good lenses to think through. Um, this other view I'll mention very briefly, uh, one called the Reformed Two Kingdom View, they would say, hey, you've got, you know, the church, kingdom of God, of God's people, and that's different than... God's kingdom of creation and natural law. And that mm. and that cultural mandate isn't for you. That's really for Jesus when he comes back to conquer. Mm. Um, and we're just supposed to be representing him in this world, but we're not necessarily going to mm. subdue America and take over. Mm. And, and we can't, you know, I read the Sermon on the Mount, and right. I don't see that as what they would say, right, essentially. Right. So, I don't know, tossed out a lot of ideas. Um, I think there's a good good middle ground there. Yeah, and... I would say if you kind of go back to the beginning, any government system, whether it's a monarchy or a dictatorship or a direct representation, democracy, or a uh, constitutional republic like what we have here in the United States, government really only has three responses that it can take towards any activity. It can prohibit it, and that means it's going to punish people who do it. It can promote it. Mm-hmm. which means that we're going to you know, like give you incentive to do this activity or it can just permit it. Like, yeah, if you want to do that, you can, but we're not going to get in your way and we're not going to bless you because of it. Um, and I think at least in America, uh, you know, if you're looking at Romans 13 and you're supposed to yeah. you know, be subject to your government, uh, we have some representation. And so we should be participating in our government. And I would say... You know, I said this recently on a Facebook post that my ultimate hope is not in government, but government is one of the tools mm. that God has ordained to help bring order to our. So it's, I, I think there's yeah. a balance where we don't go and we say, um, I am trusting in the American government or wherever you're mm-hmm. at, the British government, the German government to make everything right. And uh, without the government being right, we are not going to be able to function. Yeah. But on the same hand, I, I should be working to uh, make government right as mm-hmm. best I can because that's good. That saves lives. You know, again in Romans thirteen, government has been ordained to you know bless the people who do good and to punish the people who do evil. If we don't yeah. have a good definition of what good and evil is, then that that's gets a pro- that, that's <laughs> yes. a problem. Gets um, so uh, I I would say that that it's not this easy extremism one side or the mm-hmm. other. You can't just throw in the towel and say, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be good in my church, but I'm not going to participate in, you know, my civic duties. I also don't think you can be like, we have to have this <laughs> candidate or it's all over because ultimately God is in control. Jesus is going to come back. You know, the best form of government for a sinful people is a benevolent dictator. Mm. 
I say that being an American <laughs> right. who wants all the freedom, a benevolent dictator is what we really need. We need someone who says, you know, this is how things are going to be and this is right. And there may be some pain in it, but that's how it's going to be. Uh, uh, but no human can be a good dictator because that power corrupts and yeah. no, no mere human. No, so, human. that's right. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Good so, 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 uh, at one point in time, we will have the ultimate benevolent, the omni benevolent yeah. dictator come back and set things to right. So no, that, that, that's a good perspective. And I think so much is on in your context. It's like things look a lot different in America, even if the tide's shifting, than if you're in a Christian in Pakistan, you probably have a little right. bit different view of mm -hmm. what your role is to redeem the culture right. um, and exercise dominion in your environment. I think we are called, you know, there's responsibility with your family, civic mm -hmm. duty, this kind of thing. Um, so that, I think that is a good middle ground. I'm trying mm -hmm. to think of, you know, Bible characters. I know we can't apply everything from the old Testament, mm -hmm. but you think of, you know, Daniel and Babylon or something like that. He was pretty involved in the government. Yeah. He didn't, I don't think he changed Babylon in the fact that they were all worshiping Yahweh. Right. But he was involved. You know, uh, Jeremiah tells, you know, you're going to exile mm -hmm. and you should care about the welfare of the city. You should plant vineyards, right. build houses, be connected, knowing that this government's not going to say, hey, it's the Sabbath, let's, you know. And right. so I think there is some give and take depending on the context. We're not called to just throw in the towel. Right. But maybe in certain contexts, you're not going to totally redeem culture. You just do your responsibility, mm -hmm. even been going through Ezra and Nehemiah. Really, my takeaway from, from that, Ezra and Nehemiah, they've been called to do great things, but really doesn't turn out mm -hmm. so great. No king actually comes, but they did right. the right thing. Right. Um, and so things might not turn out how you want to, but it doesn't right. mean you can be absent. Yeah. And I think that Daniel example is really good. And we in the banter time, we talked about this book, Shepherds for Sale. Mm. And there's been a recent evangelical leader who used the, the Daniel example to kind of excuse Christians who, uh, hey, they're a part of this corporation, they're part of this uh, uh, group, and Daniel was a part of a bad government. But we saw Daniel, at least, we, we don't really know where Daniel was when the, the golden statue mm. was raised up, but we see the three Hebrew children didn't bow down, like they stood up. We see Daniel not uh, following this uh, rule to not pray to God. So I think he's a great example of, yeah. hey, I can be part of potentially an mm -hmm. evil government and do my part, mm -hmm. but there are certain lines I'm not going to cross yep. and I'm not going to uh, advance or, you know, promote or give those things a pass. I'm going to stand up and be different. And, you know, maybe that would have God miraculously yeah. saved them. But, you know, the, you know, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah said, you know, God has the power to save us, but even if he doesn't, we're not bound down to you, Nebuchadnezzar. And I think it's that good middle ground uh, where we don't have to give things a pass, but we can still be participating in a system that we may think is less than perfect. I, I, I think those are really good thoughts. And to kind of round it out, you know, we think of man has a glory. God mm -hmm. set man a pinnacle creation, image of God. We've got a role because of that. And it's kind of calling us to take stock of our lives, like where you interface with different relationships, jobs, whatever, that you do have a job to do. Yeah. It's not your job to save people. Mm -hmm. You can't do that, but right. you can represent Christ well yeah. and leave it in his hands. You know, what happens with the results, whether yeah. you know it look, works out how you would want mm -hmm. it or not, you can control you. And that that's an important takeaway. Yep. You do 100% of the things that you're called to do. And then you don't worry about the things that God is doing. Mm -hmm. Let God take care of the things he's doing. You be faithful to what you've been called to. That's great. Anthropology, lesson number one. Any any parting words, Michael? Go subdue. Go subdue. <laughs> subdue subdue the things in your life. And I think uh, Tim gave a lot of practical examples. Yeah, so really good. Good. Well, that's our take. Thanks for listening to Take Two. Find us wherever you find podcasts and on YouTube for those who want to watch our videocast. 